There's a cold going around. Um, Ashley, our community director, she's got it. Uh, people at our house have it. It's just all around, and I and I had it. Um, and it was actually, at least for me, it was it was a brief cold. It was like three days, so I'm super thankful for that. And I have a I got sucker punched when I was um, in junior high, and it broke my nose, and I never got it aligned right, so I kind of have this deviated septum, so my nose doesn't breathe right, and so consequently. Um, I get sinus infections if because you know the, the the stuff gets stuck in my nose and it can't drain right and then and so every time I get a cold like I'm always paranoid that I'm going to get a sinus infection and um, this time this is really not where this was all going I really went after my cold I got the neti pot I'm not going to go into the neti pot it's basically waterboarding light for your nose. Um, I got the coldies. I tried Sudafed this time. Um, I do NyQuil that has the Sudafedrine in it. You got to get it behind the counter. Um, Advil. I really went after it and I think it helped. I, I still have a little, I should have nutty potted this morning, but I didn't. But anyways, I think I might be over it. But I get really depressed when I have a cold, <laughs> like, like low lethality level suicidal. Like I'm not really going to kill myself, but like it comes up in my head. I'm just like, I, and then I get more depressed. I'm like a really sage. You can't handle a cold. <laughs> that, um, just makes it worse. And I mean, like, seriously, I would never kill myself. But, I, like, it runs through my head. I'm like, oh, I can't go on. I have a cold. And um, so I get, like, this cold depression. And um, But then I always come out of it, like, really, I, hopefully, if I rest and, you know, and do treat it right. On the other side, I come out really euphoric. So I have, like, this, this cold-induced bipolar um, experience you know a super low and then a super high and um so you know i i can almost like you know it's it's like clockwork like you know it just happens this way every time but so <clears throat> so i came out of this cold like a day or two ago on top of the world but I felt like it was different. It wasn't just the cold. That I felt like I had emerged from a um, almost dark period in my life. And, and the way I described it to my wife Rocky was that I finally felt like I was back in front of my life that I was back. Basically I was back in charge of my life. And as I looked back the most of this year, like wait, all this year, <laughs> maybe all this year, <laughs> I have felt like my life has just been dragging me along with it that I have, um, just been, along for the ride and sometimes that happens like that that'll happen to me in business that where you you know say like the, the the great recession there are times where there are outside forces that are much bigger than you and um it's like being swept up in a giant wave an ocean wave that there's no hope of you fighting that wave. You just have to hang on and wait for the wave to end. And it's a weird experience. I think, 
I don't know if people ever feel that way. I'm sure a lot of people feel that way. But that's what this year has been for me because of, you know, the closing of the village and then the closing of the day center in the lower level and then the closing of the day center in the upper level. And then, and now the landscaping is being completed across the street in the $12 million new development. And it is very apparent that this is this place, this location is homeless people are not welcome here. <laughs> this is not where homeless people will congregate. You can just see it. I mean, it. you don't need to be some extreme paranoid person who believes in, you know, flat earth and aliens. Just look at it. It, there's brand new to the left of my building. There's a brand new fire station to the right of my building. There's a brand new um, apartment building and retail facility. And then behind my building is the new entertainment district. We have a Starbucks, a Maserati dealership, a ho brand new hotel, a brewery. This homeless people are not welcome here. And it's, it's just the way it is. And so uh, that's why there are no homeless people at 15 Broad Street. And, but <laughs> um, I have been very, I'm, there's so many things that have been, seemingly supernatural and divine in nature. I don't know. You probably just, I'm just grasping for straws of some sort of hope or something. But what I can tell you is I have been surrounded by, well, I, th through this entire journey, I've been surrounded by really great people. But recently I've been surrounded by several really great young people, um, like in their 20s, you know. And I'm a big fan of young people, like a huge, huge, I just am a believer in them. I, 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 and I'm, I get angry when people say negative things about young people. I, you know, I could, I could as easily be an advocate for young people as I could for homeless people uh, because they get a bad rap and old people loved a shit on them. I don't understand it. I don't understand why they think that's helpful. Uh, what they're doing to that Greta young woman, the 16 year old, the environmentalist, um, enrages me. Um, I don't care if you don't, well, no, I mean, okay, whatever. Yeah. All right. So what? You don't think it matters? You don't think global, war you know, uh, uh, <laughs> you don't think we should do anything to make our environment cleaner? I guess fine. I guess. But to wish death upon a 16-year-old girl who's just trying to make a difference is... is um, uh, is almost more than I can handle. I just cannot... Imagine who thinks it is cool to shit on a 16-year-old girl who has a passion about something. And of course they're doing it because she's very powerful. Well, that's the only reason. Uh, and, you know, but just, oh my God. But it's, it's just because I'm really pro young people really 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 pro young people and so at any rate i feel like the universe has surrounded me by these amazing young people like these 20 year olds i'm talking about and they're not just your typical amazing young person they are super amazing young people like super super young people 
um, you they're like they're they're just um, they're wonderful, wonderful human beings. And this one guy, like last week, gave me a, a like a, a mixer, a, an audio mixer, and this podcast is being sent through it right now. And I don't know where he got it, but it's an awesome mix. It's awesome. And I haven't, and I'm really into audio video equipment. Like I'm just a gadget guy and I haven't had my mixer out this year. I just been doing basic stuff, but I got that. He get, he's like, here, Sage, I don't need this mixer. He's a musician. He's like, I don't need this mixer. I have the mixer. And I, I was kind of reluctant. I'm like, oh, that's too nice. You shouldn't do that. He's like, no, seriously. I don't know where. He probably, I don't know where he got it. I don't know. I don't know. But he's like, here, just have it. And so I, I brought it over and I just started fiddling with it. And I pulled out one of my, I have a Rode mic that uh, I was sitting in my desk and I tied it into the mixer and then I was playing with the buttons and, you know, working on sound levels and tying it into my computer and downloading USB drivers. And I just, it like was this, this was right where my, when my cold was coming up done and it was this like spark of like, oh yeah, there's the love there's what you, that's, there's Sage, there's Sage. And I, it was, it was so, it just brought me back. Like this little mixer, this nice mixer just brought me back. And it was like, yeah, man, you like to produce content and you like to fiddle around with this stupid crap and, and it, what's, it's what makes you feel alive and, and it's who you are. And so I just was like, wow, man. And then, and then I've just been having all these conversations with um Shar, I didn't lock unlock that. You trying to get through? Yeah. I'm doing a little vlog okay. here. This is or not a this is a podcast. But hold on, the Shar is here. It's this key for both of them. So um the I I've just they have been in all these young people have been so uplifting and you know really kind to me. But more importantly, just representing, just representing, oh, there's people in there? <laughs> Are there having a meeting, maybe? Okay, okay. And um, they're uh, just representing that youthful, hopeful exuberance of hope and love an idealism that is the only way we move forward in the world is with those kinds of extreme, ex amazingly hopeful, optimistic views of the world. And I just, it just snapped me out of it. It just snapped me out of this, like, months long funk and I just I was like and I'm back and I'm back and um part of it too is I'm getting a semblance sort of I'm starting to sketch in what my future looks like and um and I'll tell you like what I'm playing with what I'm, I'm working you know so there are two areas that really interest me. One, obviously, is homelessness. And, and it's interesting to watch me act because that's the one thing I just keep doing over and over and over again. Like, I just, 
I have, you know, I like to do a lot of things. I'm a multitasker or whatever. I like, I just like a lot of, I like chaos. I like, I like a lot of things coming me, coming at me all the time, but I just keep choosing the homeless angle. I just keep doing the homeless thing. And I, I think it's very important to listen to that. But I have also started a nonprofit um, political organization that is the the purpose of it is to get Akron people excited about their community and their government. And I have some I, I think there's I I I think I have, especially with young people, some ideas in how I can engage them in ways that will amuse them and, and appeal to them. And so I'm excited about that. So, okay, so, so basically what, if I, if I can give you these two umbrellas, one is just stay hyper-local in Akron and work on building up Akron, um, working on the Akron Homeless initiative and um, work on trying to get people engaged in politics because, you know, our voter turnout is, it's abysmal. And we have 26% unemployment, 30% of our community is African-American, um, you know, drug, you know, uh, just off the charts drug use, violent, terrible drug dealers, Hepatitis A, more twice as much as Cleveland, even though we're half the size. There's so many interesting things we should be doing in Akron, and I think I could um, inspire that. But then we have a nation that is torturing homeless people. We have made them outcasts, untouchables, unlookables even. We are, it is, it is, within our American right to not have to look at a homeless person. We, anytime you see a homeless person in a tent, in many cities, including Akron, you are just invited to call the city and they will come right out and get rid of that homeless person. It's like a, a life and death hide and seek game. And... Uh, to believe that you have the right to not look at someone is abhorrent. It is a disgrace. It's embarrassing. And so, I mean, I could do that on the local level, but then I think I have the ability to maybe do that on the national level and go to different cities and raise this awareness, potentially. But maybe it's better to just focus on one city and just keep hammering away at them until they give in. I mean, what would Martin Luther King do, right? I mean, that's Montgomery, Alabama. He just did that bus boycott until people were allowed to sit on the bus wherever the hell they wanted. So maybe it's important to stay local and not divide, you know? Uh, I, I guess, yeah, I, I don't know. I, you see, I mean, even talking it through is kind of helping me that now I'm leaning towards the local angle, you know, but the reason I bring all of this up is because this, um, this coming Saturday, well, today's the 26th, September 26th. And, uh, on Saturday, which is amazing to get a Saturday birthday. It's my birthday on Saturday. Born in 1971, it's 2019. That puts me, I believe, at 48 years old. A nondescript year. Closer to 50 than I am at 40 by a long shot. I feel good though. I'm feeling pretty healthy. I don't like to exercise too much. I like to save my joints. I just like to watch a lot of TV. <laughs> it's my my theory of longevity just don't 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 overwork those joints kids just sit down sit down so at any rate um <laughs> um 
I have been doing a um, birthday fundraiser over at Facebook. They always want you to do that. They're like, have a fundraiser on Facebook for your charity. And it has been going awesomely. It has been going awesomely. Like, let me go see where we're at right now. Hold on. Let me pull it up. It is 8.50 a.m. 8.50 in the a.m. on Thursday, uh, September 26th. And so far, we have raised $1,420. And I started it, I think, on Tuesday, Monday or Tuesday. That blows my mind. That blows my mind. <clears throat> and you guys blow my mind because of your continual support. Uh, you truly care. And you truly want to see things be better for people that aren't you. They aren't even related to you. You're just like, you know what? The way we're treating homeless people in America isn't right. And uh, here's a guy that's willing to go help him. And uh, good, good job. Go do that. Here's some money. And that's amazing, amazing. You can spend your money on so many things. Um, and we've bought tents so far. We've bought, I have sleeping bags coming. We've bought mats. Uh, we have um, just bought all the um, flashlights, emergency blankets, emergency tents, just a ton of stuff. Well over $500 we spent so far. But what I'm trying to get to right now is a shuttle because one of the ongoing major issues of homelessness in Akron, Ohio is transportation. A bus pass costs $2.50. It is not in any relationship towards how much income you have. If you're a millionaire and you want to ride the bus, it will cost you $2.50. If you have zero money, it will cost you $2.50. Otherwise, you are not allowed on the bus. That's wrong in itself. I mean, there's, see, see, that's a whole thing. Like, I should be doing a campaign, right, to, to make the bus, um, like, income, the cost of a bus ride income-based. If you don't have any money and there's a space on the bus, let that human being get on the bus. Gee, many Christmas. See, see, that's the other thing is like, I know a lot about the Akron um, landscape that would take me a while to figure out in another space. See, I think now I'm, I'm leaning towards just staying local, but developing, continuing to develop a national awareness around it. Because if you develop a national awareness around Akron, you can then be like, oh, look, my city has similar problems, you know? And then if I can ever make any movement in Akron, which I have not been able to have any success. They're just so anti-homeless. Um, if I can ever get any movement here and win any battle, then maybe I can go to another city, like you know, like Martin Luther King did. Uh, but now I think I yeah, see as I'm talking to you, I'm thinking I should just stay local. But you know, if you want to weigh in on this, I'd love to hear what your thoughts are. But at any rate, I just wanted to let you know I was very hesitant to even bring this up to you because of. Um, you already give so much, but I'm going to put a link to the fundraiser. If you want to contribute, what I'm trying to do now is raise enough money to buy a shuttle. Okay. I'm trying to get to $10,000. I, I think I overshot my, um, goal. I don't, I, by Saturday, maybe I can get to 10,000. If I get to $10,000, I will spend the night in a camp and document it. I've already been invited to a camp and I've been wanting to go to a camp, but this would be a good reason to do so, to do so. So, um, I'll put a link down there. If, you, if you're interested in contributing to that, that's where we're headed next with the fundraiser, is a shuttle. Because then, and, and may I say, one of our supporters, Lori Beal, um, I don't know, she's probably a supporter on here. She donated a card to a specific homeless person, Jim, our transitional house and um, 
we, he's got new tires. He got his, it inspired him to get his license, insurance, all this stuff. And he now um, drives people around. So, like, I really like this idea of utilizing homeless people to solve homeless people's issues, you know? That was the model we did to renovate our houses. And our, may I say, our, one, our first house, our red house, has been completely taken off the inspector's list. It is completely acceptable on the, it, that's a huge deal. And we've been going, we've been making huge progress on our, on our other house, our second house. Um, and when we get that off of the list, I think I might have enough mental space in my life to think about raising money to get a, a third house because I'm learning houses. It, their houses are very different than tents. A, a, a tent village is much different than a house. It's a much more close quarter um, feeling, especially for people that have been living outdoors and especially for a guy that never ran a transitional homeless um, house before. I had a lot to learn. But I'm learning it. We're all learning it. And I feel like we are on a path to create a system that works for transitional housing for homeless people. Um, and so we, um, I, you know, there's a possibility, probably not until spring, I don't think. I don't know. Maybe if I come. I, anyways, I don't know. But a house, a, a third house could really be on the, on the docket because I'm starting to get the hang of it. And so at any rate, the, but what I really need right now is a shuttle. So I'm going to put the link. If you want to contribute to the shuttle campaign, that would be amazing. Um, and you are awesome. You are incredible. We are nothing without you. You know, I, I don't, does it go without saying that we get no government money? <laughs> oh, that's so funny. Government money. The government would take away our money if they possibly could because I am just a thorn in their side because they're mistreating severely the weakest among us. We have made them untouchables and unlookables. <laughs> Unlookables. It's like lunchables, except lookables. Anyways. All right. When I start talking about lunchables, it's a good time to wrap up. You guys are awesome. Thank you for everything. I love you. Have a good day. I'll see you later. Bye.